Geoffrey Jide Ofo Oyema is Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Oyema was appointed in November 2015 by President Muhammadu Buhari. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science from the Columbia University, New York, a Bachelor of Arts degree in Law from St. John's College, Cambridge. He also holds two master's degrees, one in Master's of Law from the London School of Economics and Political Science, and a Master of Arts also in Law from St. John's College, Cambridge. Oyema was admitted as a barrister at law of the Supreme Court of Nigeria in 1983, and was also called to the English Bar of the Grace Inn in 1981. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. First of all, sir, <coughs> I know I just did a brief introduction, but Nigerians would like to know who the simple, quiet Minister of Foreign Affairs is. I know we left many details, where you grew up, languages you speak, and all that. Just give us a brief introduction. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> silent foreign minister. I don't know that's a compliment, but still. Um, well, I think, you know, you basically captured it there. I um, um, did political science and specialized in international relations. Um, and then I, I did law, uh, called to the English bar, called to the Nigerian bar. Uh, did a, spit, a stint with uh, the Law Reform Commission uh, during my uh, youth service and uh, worked for one year. Um, with a, a, a law firm, uh, Mobo and, and Co. in, uh, in Enugu. Then I, I went off in 1985 to, uh, to Geneva to work with one of the specialized agencies of the United Nations called the World Intellectual Property Organization. And uh, I, I worked there for more or less 30 years uh, until uh, 2015. So from 1985 to, uh, to 2015. And, um, you know, in that capacity, I uh, worked very closely with, uh, with uh, Nigeria. I was in the Africa Bureau uh, for, for, for many years and then director of the Africa Bureau there. And then I became the Deputy Director General, which is uh, the uh, equivalent within the UN system there of the Under Secretary General uh, uh, of the UN. And, um, so I, I, I retired from there, uh, early retirement, and came back uh, to Nigeria uh, after 30 years, and then was, uh, was asked by um, you know, Mr. President to join his cabinet. Um, you know, I, I speak a, a number of languages, English, French, of course, uh, German, uh, which I, I, I also uh, learned. And um, of course, the French has been extremely useful uh, for me uh, in my job as a Minister of Foreign Affairs because I find myself often having to be the interpreter in a lot of uh, the meetings uh, that, uh, that Mr. President has with, um, with other heads of state. And of course, we are surrounded by Francophone countries, so the French comes in very, very handily. It's been six years leading the Foreign Ministry, from 2015 till date. How challenging has it been? Um, it's been extremely challenging uh, because, um, you know, there, there are different aspects uh, of the job. You know, the first one is um, the administration. You know, uh, as, as a minister, you're sitting on top of, uh, of an administration. Of course, you have your permanent secretary, but still, um, the minister uh, is very much uh, part of that. So we have the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here in Abuja, uh, the headquarters with about 2,000 or more uh, staff, you know. And um, so there are unique, uh, there are challenges right there. You know, uh, capacity building. Uh, you need to invest a lot of money uh, to train your staff. Uh, and um, it's, a, it's a peculiar um, discipline, uh, uh, foreign affairs, and, um, and you really need uh, staff that, uh, that can respond uh, uh, to that. And a lot of countries have um, specialized institutions for developing staff that serve in their foreign affairs. And then you have also just the infrastructure challenges uh, of the ministry. Then, of course, you have um, your embassies in uh, over 100 countries uh, around the world. 
and uh, so keeping them um, you know, at the cutting edge, uh, first of all, of uh, technological development, but also uh, administratively and so forth. Uh, these are all huge, huge challenges. Then, of course, developing your foreign policy in a very dynamic world. And with all the challenges we face as a country, you know, security challenges, governance challenges, you know, employment challenges. Uh, so, so all the challenges that we have as a country in Nigeria um, also you know, uh, impacts on our engagement with the rest of the world. Then again, you have uh, multilateral institutions like the United Nations, regional institutions, the African Union, and uh, ECOWAS, and uh, Nigeria has to be present, has to be proactive, has to lead. Um, so it's extremely uh, uh, diverse and multifaceted what one has to do uh, as a minister, uh, that it really is um, not easy at all. Looking at Nigeria's foreign policy trust, I know because there was a change in government, but we've, we've witnessed a more dedicated and focused uh, approach to issues concerning Nigerians. Can you shed more light on this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been the most difficult. I, I'm glad you made, you made that point because I, I, I should have also mentioned it. That one of the big challenges is that, you know, we are a country, a large country, almost 200 million people or more, and a large, large diaspora. Nigerians are all around the world. Almost every country in the world has a significant population of, of Nigerians, some doing well, some not doing not so well. And this also poses a lot of challenges, as we see every single day in the papers. Uh, we're reading about one thing or the other. We've also had a large number uh, involved in you know, human trafficking, caught up uh, in Libya and places that have required to be evacuated. And um, you know, uh, Nigeria is being deported from you know, a lot of countries um, uh, around the world and having to engage and negotiate with countries on the terms and um, you know, circumstances of deportations of Nigerians. So, so, um, so it's, it's a real challenge and then of course the demands that uh, this large number of Nigerians place on our uh, embassies uh, around the world, you know, uh, for, for various things from visas to, you know, um, you name it, passports and so forth. And, uh, and we've seen and we've seen in the media uh, the challenges uh, that that leads to uh, and so forth. So that's been a really, really challenging aspect of, uh, of our engagement. I recall the xenophobic attacks in South Africa, the traders' impasse in Ghana. For the first time, Nigerians felt proud that they had a government that would stand by them. What was it like managing the situation? It's been extremely difficult. And, um, you know, it's interesting that you say for once uh, Nigerians uh, were proud. Uh, and, and this, I, I think, reflects the challenges. You know, a lot of the work we do uh, um, uh, in foreign affairs, um, <clears throat> we do quietly and we go about our business. Uh, we're not playing to the gallery. We're not looking, you know, to, to, to score uh, cheap points or whatever. And, um, but Mr. President, uh, Mohamedou Buhari has been extremely supportive of Nigerians all around the world. So, I mean, not only in South Africa, where he even engaged directly to address the situation of Nigerians there, in Ghana, where he uh, uh, engaged with the president of Ghana to try and solve the issue uh, of the traders. He approved for a plane to be sent to Libya to evacuate Nigerians who were caught in the camps there. He approved for a plane to be sent to Russia to bring back um, uh, these Nigerians um, uh, who, who, who went there and then um, got themselves stuck uh, in Russia during the World Cup uh, uh, in Russia and, and all kinds of other support that we've been providing to Nigerians all around the world, fighting for Nigerians um, who have been sentenced uh, in countries like Saudi Arabia and other countries uh, for drug trafficking or, or, or not, as the case may be. And, um, you know, and every single day we're engaging with countries all around the world trying to solve problems that you know Nigerians have found themselves in but of course these are not always in the media so um, and uh, you know we scored a lot of uh, had a lot of successes um, you know bringing Nigerians back or solving their situations uh, in those countries getting compensation like we did once in Italy when a Nigerian was murdered and uh, our embassies uh, are always engaged and, and, and working for Nigerians so um, 
It's not easy. Uh, there are not many countries that have the numbers that we have of their nationals all over the world in different countries, but we do the best we can. I remember when the Saudi case came up, though there was public outcry, Nigerians felt that there was no hope for the two Nigerians that had been sentenced to death row. But under your administration, you were able to secure their release. Was that a statement of intent from government? No, there are other Nigerians, and you know that one just had um, um, that one <clears throat> a high profile in the media, you know. Uh, but there are others, you know, that uh, that we've secured their release in uh, in Singapore, which is extremely difficult. There was a Nigerian that was uh, sentenced to death, you know, managed to get a, a, a reprieve. Uh, for him, you know, that did not capture the imagination of the media, and of course, we don't go around trumpeting, you know, our achievements uh, in the media uh, either. And you know, there have been others, you know, from China that we brought back home. So it was not only the the, the Saudi one; that was just one that happened to be uh, in the media because some people <clears throat> wanted to make it a media uh, event. But believe you me, every single Nigerian outside this country is guaranteed of the support of, um, you know, of the government, uh, in whatever challenges they face. All we ask is that they have to also try and um, respect the laws uh, of the countries in which they're in. I mean, you know, uh, there are a number of countries that are now, countries more or less around the world, they're all, you know, being very uh, populist, you know, nationalistic, putting in place measures uh, to keep um, certain areas, sectors of economy for the, their nationals, you know, uh, because a lot of Nigerians, especially in African countries, they go, they get into spare parts business, you know, a lot of these kinds of activities and trading, petty trading and so forth. And, uh, and after a while, you know, governments want to change that situation and have their nationals take over uh, those sectors, you know, but we always come out and we, we, we engage with the government uh, to try and secure the um, the, the, the opportunities for the Nigerians. At the moment, for instance, with Botswana, Botswana has now set up a law, all these Nigerians in, um, you know, petty traders and, uh, and other small businesses um, are, 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 are being prevented now from continuing their businesses. So we're engaging with the government of Botswana to try and see what, um, uh, what we can do to safeguard the, um, you know, the, the the, the, the work uh, of, uh, of these Nigerians and their jobs and their businesses uh, uh, and so forth. So it's, it's around the clock uh, activity. Now let's go to the closing of several embassies and consulates around the world. I know it was a difficult decision to make. Why did government get there? Uh, well, we had to because, you know, we have so many other challenges. Um, you know, when we compare ourselves as a country to um, countries on the same level as us, you know, I think of Egypt, I think South Africa and others, you know, um, middle income, middle powers, middle income countries, um, the amount we invest in, uh, in, a, in a foreign policy, foreign affairs, uh, percentage of the budget is much, much lower than a lot of those countries. But then it's probably understandable we have a lot of challenges, uh, you know, we have uh, security challenges and so forth, you know. So obviously, you know, we have to be, be rational in the way we uh, allocate our funds and our resources, the different sectors, you know. So, uh, so it is difficult for us, and um, we we had to start looking at rationalizing uh, our foreign our presence in foreign countries. As I said, we had over 110 missions around the world, um, so we we wanted to cut down. Uh, on, our, on our embassies. But, you know, at the same time, Nigeria is a big country with big ambitions and a big presence in the global uh, stage. And, um, and we need to be present, you know. And, um, and we have Nigerians all over the world. So it's, it's a difficult choice to make, to cut down on our embassies, but at the same time, you know, uh, playing a, a big role and managing Nigerians uh, uh, abroad. But another thing that we found, and we tried to, we did close some missions, uh, and embassies was that um, it's also very expensive, a lot more expensive than we had anticipated. Uh, you know, you kind of think, ah, it's very easy, just close down an embassy. But when you close down an embassy, you incur there are a lot of costs involved because you have a lot of local staff who work there and you have to pay them off. And uh, it's extremely expensive, you know, insurance and so many other things. So, um, 
So we're looking more at rationalizing our embassies, uh, having a smaller number of staff manning them, uh, smart missions we call them, uh, where now with information and communications technologies, a lot of people working on their own, not needing secretaries and so forth, it's now possible to, you know, to have missions that are staffed by you know, two or three people. So that's where we're, where we're actually focusing on. 50 years of bilateral relations with China Next month, and it's happening under your watch. Looking back at the relationship, we know China has been involved in several sectors in Nigeria, real, energy, and others. How will you appraise this relationship? It's been a win-win uh, uh, relationship, uh, without doubt. You know, uh, China has benefited enormously. I mean, we have paid. Um, there's no charity about it, you know. Uh, but we have needed also uh, support uh, and investment in our uh, infrastructure sector, transport uh, as sector, and, uh, and others, energy, as you mentioned, uh, sector. And China is um, developed very fast in a period of that 50 years. China has, you know, gone from a real developing country to a superpower. So, um, so their experience is also important, but also their capacity, their capacity to, to deliver huge projects, mega projects, you know. And um, so we've, uh, we've needed that expertise they have. We've needed their capital. The, uh, um, China has uh, huge capital reserves. Um, and so they're able to lend money at uh, competitive rates, uh, which is what we've been looking for. And um, so, so we've worked very closely together. Uh, over those 50 years, we've always had very good relations uh, with, uh, with China, and we've seen how they've evolved as a country. Uh, we've also been evolving during that time, and we've never, ever had any problems uh, with, um, with, with China. So 50 years of this relationship, uh, it's been a good one. Uh, one of our big markets for our oil exports uh, also. What we're looking for uh, more and more is that uh, for them to be buying more Nigerian goods. You know, we have to be a lot more aggressive now uh, to get them to, uh, uh, to open up their markets more for, 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 for Nigerian goods so that we can have a little bit more balance in our, in our trade uh, relations. Let's talk about the pandemic now. First of all, I'll start from a very personal note. When it came out last year, you lost your very good friend for many years, the former chief of staff to the president, Abba Kiari. How difficult was it to manage the situation? Yeah, you know, I mean, as you say, you know, we've been a friend, uh, we've been a friend and brothers for 40 years. Uh, you know, we've been very, very close, and uh, it was a huge blow. Uh, you know, I cannot hide that. And um, but you know, two families are also very close, so um, we are also moving forward with his family, supporting his family as as, as best as we can. You know, and uh, and and trying to help to fill that void for them. Of course, it can never be filled, but it has been very, very difficult. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not just for us, but also for Nigeria. I think um, Nigeria um, misses him a lot because, um, you know, it was not always obvious to people, but he was playing a very important role at the side of Mr. President to keep a lot of things together in Nigeria and uh, to keep uh, the country uh, moving on track in a very positive direction. The foreign minister has been one of the worst hit by the pandemic. A lot of travels had had to be restricted. So many airspaces closed. How has this affected the operations of the foreign ministry? Well, it has. You know, uh, you said it yourself. You know, um, because this uh, ministry uh, is about constant and permanent engagement um, with other countries and personalities around the world you know, um, and physical engagement and, you know, to promote relations between countries, you know, and oiling the relationships. But, um, but now we've all had to uh, sort of get used to uh, Zoom and virtual uh, meetings, but it's not the same at all. Uh, it's not at all the same. So we've been hit uh, extremely hard. And, um, 
you know, but, but everybody has been, you know, uh, all over the world. So we're, we're making do, but, but nevertheless, you know, we're, we're adapting to, to, to the new uh, situation and uh, circumstances and, uh, and, and still keeping up uh, the various, um, you know, relations, engagements, activities that, um, that we need to, to, to be keeping up with. Finally, finally, we know the administration still has up to two years before the expiration of your tenure, what should Nigerians expect? Well, the expiration of Mr. President's tenure, <laughs> because uh, we don't know who he might want to keep or who he might want to offload at any given time, so we don't take anything for granted. Um, but we, um, you know, as, as a government, you know, um, I think uniquely uh, Mr. President has wanted to continue. A lot of governments in the past have come in and everything that their predecessors have done put aside and started afresh. Mr. Car Mr. President has uh, insisted on finishing off all the projects for, you know, that this government inherited. But, um, but above all, laying a foundation, uh, uh, laying a real foundation, infrastructure, uh, 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 transport network, uh, energy uh, foundation, because we want to industrialize you know, as a country. And these are you know, prerequisites. Uh, for that, and um, so that architecture, you know, of uh, infrastructure, uh, energy, uh, transport, ICT, um, I think solid foundation is being uh, uh, laid and uh, moving forward uh, sustainably. Uh, as far as the foreign ministry uh, is concerned, we also want to lay. Uh, the basic foundation because what we met in terms of information and, uh, and communications technology, our capacity to uh, you know, um, uh, interact with our embassies around the world has not been very strong you know? so that infrastructure needs to be in place. Uh, the, the administrative uh, uh, setup and workings of headquarters and its engagement with embassies, we have to completely uh, revamp, you know, computerize it, and and have uh, a, a, you know a state of the art um, you know infrastructure within the the ministry. At the moment, uh, it's very much um, 20th, 19th century uh, infrastructure we have in place. Capacity building, we want to put in place and lay foundation for training and retraining of the staff so that we have high quality um, uh, diplomats representing the country. It makes a huge difference. The quality of your diplomats can, can make or break a, a country. So we have to focus uh, much more and we're trying to lay the uh, foundation uh, for that and then um, you know, have in place uh, a good um, you know, a framework for engagement uh, with countries. So we're going to have uh, this year, uh, we hope, a review of Nigeria's foreign policy going forward and, um, and, 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 and have in place develop a foreign policy that is responsive to the realities of today uh, and the global community today going forward so that in two years time um, whoever comes in uh, will find uh, at the national level and at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs level um, you know, a framework that will enable them to take Nigeria forward. Thank you very much. You have heard it loud and clear from the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema. The Foreign Minister will continue to build on the foundation it has set in the past and continue to review its operations to ensure that Nigerians form the center trust of this current administration. Thank you for watching.